Hi Rosies, and welcome to another video. Sorry I didn't upload last week. I was on vacation with my dad. He surprised me with a trip to Universal Studios in Hollywood for Christmas. So I was there last week, so I wasn't able to upload anything last week. So I'm probably going to upload a video on that soon. But for now I'm going to be doing a get to know me and my interest video because I thought to share what I'm interested in and what I like and to share things that you guys will probably already know about me from the BFF tags I've done with my best friend Tori or some that I've never shared with you because I feel either too embarrassed or ashamed to share with you but I should be able to share anything with you guys so yeah let's get started. The first thing you guys should know about me is that I am very emotional and sensitive so I've been like that basically since I was like little so what the sensitive thing I get really cold super easily so I have to wear hoodies and jackets and pea coats and all that stuff all the time because I get super cold even with just like a short sleeve shirt like this I'm already cold just a little bit so I feel like I have to warm up. I always have to wear my robe when I'm at home. I wear something like slippers or gloves, just something to keep me warm because I'm very sensitive. And when it comes to movies, when like someone dies or like something else like that, I get super sensitive. And then I get a little bit emotional too because then I start to cry. I get emotional for a lot of things. I can get emotional if like my friends don't want to talk to me I will get really sad and then I'll feel like they don't want to talk to me and then I'll start to feel sad myself and I just feel like I'm alone and they don't want to talk to me and that's why I have Tori because she makes me feel really comfortable and she makes me feel better with whatever I'm feeling when I'm ever feeling down or upset or just feel like I need a friend around she's always there for me so I feel most comfortable around her, so when she's around I feel a lot better, especially when I'm emotional and sensitive. My other friend I don't really talk to as much, and that makes me feel really sad. And I tend to get a little emotional, not too bad, but it still affects me because we've been friends for so long, and I, we rarely talk anymore, so it really does affect me, and I don't cry over it. I just get really sad, and I feel like talking to her about it, but I can't because we don't talk anymore. So that's really sad. I don't know, like, I just tend to get really sensitive and emotional. Like, my feelings could get hurt super easily. I, even when it doesn't involve me, when I see, like, a fight, I start to cry because I don't like to see people fighting or whatever. Like, you know, when, like, your parents or siblings argue, you don't like to see that. And I start to cry, even though it doesn't involve me at all. It's just, I'm physically there watching it, and I just feel so bad that I start to cry and I really don't know what to do except like cry to myself because I don't like crying in front of people. I usually just cry to myself, but I mean, it's kind of hard to deal with all that stuff, especially when it comes to family or friends. I can get very emotional. So they basically, a lot of people need to like kind of watch what they do around me or say, because it could really affect me depending on what it is. And if it really does affect me inside, I feel uncomfortable. Um, like if someone mentions something that I don't feel comfortable with, I'll just try to ignore it or like change the subject in any way because it makes me feel uncomfortable, but they don't know that. So I just kind of calmly get, get it off my mind so I don't freak out or cry or get emotional in any way because they don't know. So yeah, I'm a very emotional person. It kind of sucks that I'm like that in some ways but in a way I guess it's okay because then it makes me share my feelings or it makes me open up more in some way which is good for everyone to do so yeah that's one thing that you guys should know about me is that I can get very emotional and sensitive another thing you guys should know about me is that I hate horror movies any horror movie I hate it because I don't like seeing violence even though it's a movie and there's special effects in it, I don't care. It's just like seeing blood. I hate seeing blood and death in any movie. Doesn't matter what it is. Even like an animated film, which I love animated films. So um, I see a horror movie. I have to hide behind Tori when I'm with her because I get too scared. Or when I'm by myself, I just don't watch that genre at all. Um, 
I just get really scared when I see a horror movie and I, I just hate them so much. I'll see them if like, I guess, if for example, if like Tori wants to see it with me or something, I'll watch it with her. But in the inside, I'll be terrified and I'm trying to like act like it's okay, but I really do hate it. Seeing blood in horror movies just makes me feel really uncomfortable and it kind of makes me feel not queasy or anything, but just like looking at it, I have to look away. Like when someone's being stabbed and you see them being stabbed or shot, just that moment when you see like the bullet go through the head or see like the blade go through the skin, that freaks me out too much that I have to look away. I hate horror movies. I just hate anything with blood in it. So that's one thing that really makes me feel super uncomfortable is seeing horror movies. Unless it's one where it doesn't involve any blood whatsoever and it's actually an okay horror movie. I don't like too much violence, so I really don't like horror movies at all. Another thing you guys should probably know about me is that I hate being alone. Um, I've been around my dad and my mom and my sister for my whole life and I've always been around people. Whether if it's like a lot of my friends or my family, especially my family here, like my mom, my dad, and my sister. Um, I hate being alone. I like, I need to make sure they're all in the house at some point when I go to bed because I've had a traumatic experience in the past that's still affected me today. So I, this is like when I was like probably 11 or 12. I was super young at this point that I remember. So I was in my nightgown and I hated being alone at this point. My dad and my mom would have to tell me where they're going so I don't freak out because I did a lot. So my dad went to go drop off my sister somewhere and he didn't tell me and I was looking for him all over the house. So I ran up and down the stairs and I started to cry a little bit because I was freaked out because he didn't tell me at all. So I ran outside the house. I went to my driveway. I looked outside and there was this girl walking. And I felt bad for the girl thinking about it now because I must have been, I don't know what I was thinking really, just going out in my nightgown. Um, I talked to this girl, she was on her phone. I said, help, like I can't find my dad anywhere. And immediately she tells her friend who she's talking to on the phone, like she can't find her dad, where is she? And after, I, after she says that, my dad comes around the corner and sees me crying. And then I had a serious talk with him about it and he said he was sorry, but I mean, it's not really that traumatic, but for me, it was a traumatic experience. So I just hate being alone. Especially because I've been around people all my life and I'm just used to that having someone in the house with me And if I'm alone, well now I'm okay back then I was like I Really just hated being alone But now I don't mind it because I can be alone like for multiple hours and I'm perfectly fine But when I was younger, it was very traumatic for me. So I do hate being alone even when I go on vacation Like I just went to Universal Studios recently and I went on a ride by myself and my dad was waiting for me and I got out of the ride and I didn't see him so I calmly tried to find him but in my head I was like don't freak out don't freak out because I still have that mental image in my head of when my dad did leave and I was freaked out so there are times where I do freak out if I don't see someone I'm with and I can't find him and then I calmly like just kind of breathe and then try to find him again so that's another thing is that I really hate being alone for like a certain amount of time, I guess. Another thing you guys may not know about me, if you don't know already, is that I talk a lot. <laughs> I'm, I have a problem with it, basically. I, um, I have a problem with talking too much. That's the thing. I have a problem with shutting up. I can't talk when I start talking like this right now. If I kept talking, I'd go on for hours. I can go on for like a while with a certain subject. A lot of my videos, I talk a lot about one thing and the first video I made the shirt haul I was nervous so I started pointing and I was just trying to calm down for one thing but um it was the point that I talk a lot so even when I'm with my parents or Tori or whoever else I tend to talk a lot and I tend to repeat myself and I don't notice it <laughs> and it's kind of a serious problem I have and it's hard to break that habit but when I do talk a lot I have to make sure I don't talk that much because I need the other person who I'm with to have a chance to talk 
and it's really hard for me to be quiet because there's always something on my mind that I need to get out. Um, yeah, especially in like the video I made with Tori on her channel, the um, blindfolded makeup challenge, it was her channel and I was the one talking way more than her, just in general because I talk more than her and I'm the most talkative one out of the two of us. But I just have a serious problem with talking a lot. I'm able to shut up and let someone talk, but when I start talking, I need to make sure I shut up because not everything I say people are gonna be interested in. So I need to like learn when people are not interested in what I'm saying to like stop and let them talk and think like, okay, if they're not interested in it, then don't mention it again or wait a while before you mention it again. So yeah, that's a really big problem I have is talking a lot and I don't know if I'll ever break that habit because it's been with me for a very long time, but I'm still trying to not talk as much, but it's really hard when you are a talkative person. Another thing you guys might not know about me is that I, I'm a hopeless romantic. I love watching like a relationship develop into like a romantic relationship. If for me personally, I love like like romantic stuff basically like giving the girl flowers giving her chocolate on valentine's day that kind of thing or a candlelight dinner or walking on the beach with someone um i love all of that stuff and i mean i wish that i could experience it because i am single um every time i see like a movie or a tv show or whatever i feel a little jealous that that i can't really do that at the moment but I love watching relationship develop in a show or a movie and I think it's really cute when they do those kind of things. So I do love all this hopeless romantic stuff like the guy treating the girl out to dinner or tucking the chair in or something or giving her her jacket when she's cold. Like all that romantic stuff. I just love it. Or like being out in this under the stars and just like watching the stars or having a picnic. Just something like that. I just love all that stuff, even though I am a little jealous of it. And I wish I had that, but I don't right now, which is kind of sad. But I do really love all that hopeless, all those hopeless romantic stuff. So I'm a sucker for them. I just can't help it, even though they do make me a little jealous. And I wish I was that girl that the guy is out on a date with. Um, I still love watching a relationship develop because I think it's super cute and like in a show or a movie when you see a guy and a girl get together and they don't get together till like the end of the episode or the end of the movie you're just hoping they'll get together and at the end you're so happy it's like why did they take that long to do it but yeah I'm hopeless romantic I love all that stuff and I hope to one day experience all that stuff that I've seen in like movies and shows because I think it's really sweet and I really wish I could experience that one day. One thing you guys may not know about me, and this is one thing that I really don't like talking about that much because I'm partially ashamed in some way or I just feel really embarrassed to talk about. Because I personally don't like talking about this or when someone brings it up to me because it makes me feel really uncomfortable and I just don't want to talk about it. And it makes me honestly hate myself and I really don't like getting down on myself. But when someone brings it up or when I think about it to myself or whatever else, it just makes me hate myself even more, which I shouldn't hate myself. No one should hate themselves, but I tend to hate myself almost a lot because of this. And it's not something I can help or control because I can't, but um, yeah. So one thing you guys don't know about me, maybe you know of it already because of the BFF tag, I only use my left hand. I am paralyzed. My whole right side is paralyzed. My brain down to my foot. The whole right side is paralyzed. My lung doesn't have enough oxygen in it. So I only have my left lung to breathe normally. I can still breathe out of my right lung, but my left lung has more oxygen in it and I can breathe better with it. When I'm sick, it takes me longer to get better because I have the one lung that really works better than my right lung. So 
the core the umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck three times so ever since birth I've been paralyzed and I try not to show it it's it's really not that much but to me it makes me feel super embarrassed and I try to hide it as best as I can not that I can anyway but um see this hand this is the working hand this hand I use for everything if I didn't have this working hand I wouldn't be able to do anything and here's my right hand I have like very few mobility in this hand I can do this I can't like do this I, I can't really do that so um I've basically been like this since birth this is just one part of it my spine is like not straight it's kind of bent so when I stand up my left side is like at a perfect angle my right side's kind of down a little bit and when I stand my right arm's shorter than my left um yeah there I I'm stable I'm still able to move my arm and my hand like I'm able to move it right now I have mobility in it but I'm not able to do certain things like write with it or I can't really cook for myself really it's very difficult to do it I can't really um I can't really like zip jackets or whatever easily um I have a lot of trouble with things I need help with a lot of things I can't tie my own shoes so I have to have elastic laces when I wear my shoes um, I, it's very hard to deal with this because there are times just, I wake up in the morning and I don't feel like getting up because of it, because it makes me feel like crap. I know I can't help it, but I have to live with it for the rest of my life. No one else I know like well enough, my whole family and out of my friends, I'm the only one who's paralyzed. Um... I try to be positive about it and I really do try to be positive but I don't think there's no way I can be positive with it um, it's just something I really feel uncomfortable talking about or mentioning but I feel okay now mentioning it to you guys but it really does make me feel like I hate myself a lot more with this um, I have to like use this hand for everything if I didn't have it I don't know what I would do without this hand because this hand like helps me shower it helps me eat it helps me do everything um it's like really hard to do a lot of things when someone mentions it I don't mind talking about it but it's like it bothers me when someone asks me like oh how did you get this or like I don't know something like that like if someone asks me what happened I'll be okay to tell them but if someone's like how did that happen or like how did how did you get this like I mean I don't like talking about it I'm not proud of it but when someone asks me that I feel super uncomfortable and I tend to get a little mad about it not that they would know so I tend to like kind of be silent and kind of forget what they said there was this experience in high school where this guy, um, I guess I hung out with him very rarely. I was rarely around him. Um, he came up to me, we started talking, and I guess he asked me about my right hand. And he's like, oh, um, so how did you get that? And I wanted to like yell and scream at him because I don't like talking about it. Like. If you could tell I don't like dealing with all of this, then why mention it? But I'm okay with talking about it. There's nothing wrong with it. I've talked to her about Tori a lot of times. She knows more than anyone how much I hate it. I'm comfortable talking about it with her and my other friend who I don't really talk to as much, which I wish we would, but we haven't. Um, I don't really know what to say in those instances when someone asks me like how did you get this like in my head I think how do you think I got it like it wasn't like I got in an accident and it's magically like that it's because I was like that since birth um I also have to wear a brace on my leg to help my leg like the spine or my I guess my leg kind of lift up a little bit so my spine's aligned I guess is the right way to say it I really hate wearing it it makes me feel 
even more disabled and it makes me feel more vulnerable and I don't like that. I want to be like more independent and like be able to do things on my own. I know I can't do all those things on my own, but like when I'm in the brace, it makes me feel like I can't do anything and I really don't like wearing it. I honestly haven't worn it for a very long time, like a few months, maybe even a year because it also hurts. I have my foot in my shoe and the brace, obviously I have the brace on and it hurts my foot to the point where I have to take it off and like I can't move my leg when I walk. It's just very difficult for me to do because my leg is kind of stuck in one spot. I can't like bend it. Um, I just don't like it. I don't like being paralyzed. I don't appreciate when someone doesn't really realize like, oh, she was like this since she was born. Like, I don't know how to explain it really. It's just, I'm not proud of it. I mean, no one really should be proud of it because it's something like, you can't, you can't control it, you can't help it, that's who you are, but I don't like it. I'm not proud of it, I'm not happy about it. There are times I don't want to get up in the morning, I don't want to like get up, get dressed, get shower, like shower, look all nice, put on makeup. I just don't really feel like doing anything really. Um, in high school, well, like, you know, in PE you would run like a mile or so, or just a few laps. Um, I would run and I was always like the last one because of my lun. So I would run around and I felt like I couldn't breathe because I was running and I only had one lun that really worked. So it was very hard for me to do that. It's hard for me to do a lot of things and this sounds kind of dumb or stupid really when you think about it but this is always something I wanted to do because yes I'm a hopeless romantic and I really wish I could do this but I can't. I really wish like when the time comes, if the time comes that I do have a boyfriend or someone I really do care about who's a guy, that I could put both hands on their face like you know like guys do with a girl before he kisses her or something. I can only do it with one hand and that makes me feel really upset about it. I don't know, I just don't feel, I don't know how to explain it. I just wish I could do that, but I can't because I could put my hand like this, no problem, but when my, with my right hand, it would just go like that. Imagine like, you're about to like, hold someone's face. I can't hold it the way all of you could probably hold it, and that makes me feel really sad because that's some, one thing I really wanted to do, and I can't. I don't think I'll ever be able to do it, which obviously I can't, but I don't know. It's, it makes me feel really uncomfortable and I really hate it. It's not something I can help but control, but I just don't like it. I'm okay with talking about it. I'm really okay now, but like back then I hated it. I still hate it, but I'm trying to be more positive about it and realizing it's not something I can help. I'm like this for the rest of my life. I just have to like deal with it and go on every day, but it's still very hard like unless you know what it's like being paralyzed then it's like you don't really know what it's like it's not really fun like I wish I wasn't I wish my hand worked I wish my lung had enough oxygen or whatever it is to be able to have more like ability for me to breathe normally like everyone else um I wish I didn't have to wear a brace I wish my spine was aligned. I wish a lot of things. Um, it's just really hard for me to talk about sometimes because I could, yeah, I could get emotional from it because it's something I really don't like talking about. And I think one time in high school, um, I did get emotional. Like I almost started crying because of it. I think I did start crying because of it because I mentioned it. And even the thought of mentioning it or even talking about it made me cry because I don't like talking about it. But I mean, if any of you guys want to know about it and how I deal with it, you're welcome to ask me. I'm open to it. I, I'm i okay talking about it now. I know it's something I can't help or control. But there are times that I really do get down on myself and I hate myself because of it. There, I had this dream that um, I was walking 
and I looked at both of my hands and I wasn't paralyzed. And for that moment, I felt like a normal person with no issues or whatever. I mean, no one's perfect, but like I wish I had a working hand. And then I woke up and I looked at my hand and I was paralyzed again. So that really made me upset. So, um, yeah. It really does help to have like my dad around who makes me feel like I'm not paralyzed. He makes me feel really comfortable. And he doesn't even think about that because he knows that I have to deal with it. And it really helps that I have Tori too because I've been friends with her for 10 years now, almost 11. And she's been with me through the best part of me. Like she's seen me at my complete worst when I cry like I'm devastated. She's seen me at my worst and she knows how much I hate it. And she doesn't even look past it either, which is good because you don't like to discuss it or talk about it that much. And they know how much like you probably don't like it. So um, yeah, I really appreciate her in my life because she doesn't see me as like a disabled person. She sees me as just me, me being like kind of my image to herself. I can be very childish. So I'm glad that she doesn't see like the part of me that I hate. She knows that I get upset about it. Um, I just appreciate when people know that I have to deal with it, but they don't talk about it to me. They just see past it, which makes me feel more comfortable and makes me feel better about myself. So, yeah, I mean, I can go on and on about this, but it really does affect me a lot. And I'll have to deal with it for the rest of my life. And I don't mind asking my dad or Tori for help or whoever else is around me for help. But there are times I just wish I felt more independent and was able to do things on my own. But... Yeah, that's one thing you guys definitely probably don't know about me. You can't tell just by looking at me, but when you look more at me, you can see, like, basically my hand, or you could probably tell if I'm right in front of you, and you could see my arms, like, one of my arms is shorter than the other, or if, like, I got sick, it would take me longer to get better, or, like, if I ran, I would run super fast, and then I would have to stop because I'd have to breathe and calm down. So, yeah, that's definitely one thing that you guys probably don't know about me. And if you do, then sorry for all the ranting. <laughs> but if you don't know about me, that's definitely one thing that if anyone who's around me, I mean, yeah, that's basically one thing you would probably know about me for sure. Or see if you don't, if you didn't know me, you'd probably see it at some point. But yeah. I'm okay now, but there's still times where I do hate myself and I don't like who I am because of it, but I try to stay positive because I'm a very positive person. I'm usually very happy and I don't let that get to me because there are other things on my mind, like things I enjoy or whatever else. So yeah, that's definitely a huge thing that if you guys wanted to know about me, that's definitely one thing you guys should know about me, is that I'm paralyzed. Now we're going to move on to my interests. I have a few interests that you guys may know already from my past videos, or there's some that you may not know already. Um, first one, if you don't know this about me, if you've watched my shirt haul or the BFF tags I've done with Tori, you should know this because I've mentioned some of these things in those videos. I love Disney. I am a Disney fanatic. I love all the Disney movies. I love like all the merch. I get a lot of shirts if you guys haven't noticed. I have way more shirts than I've showed you in my shirt haul. Um, I have a problem with getting shirts, mostly just Disney in general. Um, I first went to Disneyland when I was seven and ever since I went there I've been obsessed with Disney and Disneyland in general. I always want to go there. Um, my dad gets really sick of it when I tell him I want to go because he knows that. Um, I love Disney so much it's kind of become my life. I feel like I can be like my true self when I'm at Disneyland or when I'm watching a Disney movie, especially one of my favorite Disney movies. Um, I'm mostly in my element when I have 
like Disney stuff on or watching anything Disney or I'm at Disneyland like I feel like I could be my true self and just be who I really am. When it comes to Disney movies, I love The Lion King. That is my favorite Disney movie of all time. I love the first Lion King. I especially love Lion King 2. I love Kovu and Kiar. They're my favorite Disney couple of all time. I just, in general, I love lions. I, they're like one of my favorite animals. I love the storyline in it. I love the characters. I just love the movie in general and it's so like, it can be very emotional and powerful when you hear the Circle of Life song at the beginning. It gets everyone like really emotional and into the movie and I start to cry because of it. Because um, it's a very emotional movie and I love it that much that I start to cry. Someone would ask me, let's see a Disney movie, which one do you want to see? I would, see? I would say Lion King. So that's definitely one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. It's always going to be my number one favorite. Um, my other favorite Disney movie is Aladdin. I love Jasmine. She's my favorite Disney princess. I love her tiger, Raja. Um, I love Aladdin. He's really cool. I like him. Um, I just love the storyline and I love the way Jasmine looks. She's so like independent. She wants to get, she wants to get out of her castle because she's been in there for basically her whole life and she just wants to explore the world. I love um, just basically everything in there. I just love the whole movie. It can be a very powerful movie too when you watch it and you feel so invested in it that you're hoping like one day that maybe you can have the relationship that Aladdin and Jasmine have or whatever Disney couple you wish you had that relationship and um, yeah. Um, I love The Little Mermaid. I love Ariel. She's so pretty. I love the whole like mermaid thing. I think it's really cool that we get a movie about this a princess being under the water which is really cool because all the other ones it's like above land like on land so you don't see that too often when it's like a girl under the water who lives under the water so I like that I love the characters of course I also love looking at the Disney castles in the movies that I like I do love how the castles are designed and made I think it's really cool um, I love Tangled I love Rapunzel her castle is really cool um, I love Pascal, I love Maximus, I love Flynn, I love all the characters. There are a few that I like, there's, I mean, there's movies that I like way more than others. There are some that I don't like, but, I mean, they're Disney. I do enjoy them, even though I don't like them. I do enjoy watching them, because there are some that could be my favorite and some that aren't. Um, I do love Disney. I hope one day I will go on a Disney date, because... <laughs> I really feel most comfortable at Disneyland. I feel like I could be a kid again. I just feel like in my element. I can feel like myself when I'm there. So yeah, I just love anything Disney. That's definitely one thing you guys should know about me, that I love Disney. I'm obsessed with it. Another thing you guys might not know about me is that I love animes, mostly romantic and school animes I love. Um, I've been into the Japanese and Korean culture a lot. I like to see like how they live and how they go to school, like what it's like compared to us. Um, I've been fascinated with that for a while now. I love learning about it. Um, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube about it. I've just been really interested in it for a very long time now. And when it comes to animes, I love romantic and school animes. So yeah, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I do love watching romantic animes. But I also love seeing like what they do in school and how it's different from ours. Um, I generally like watching dub more than sub because when I watch a s anime and sub, the captions distract me from what I'm watching so I feel like I won't pay attention so I like dub better plus I can hear it better if I'm like looking away for a second I'll know what they're saying and it makes it a lot more enjoyable for me to watch it in dub. Some of the animes that I love are Sword Art Online. I love Snow White with the Red Hair. 
That's like one of my new favorites. I just love a lot of those animes. I know Sword Art Online isn't all romantic, but I do like the anime since I've watched it. I like the whole fighting thing, how they're in a virtual world, and I I just love the whole thing. Um, I love like, I love Hitalia and I love Host Club. I love those kind of animes. They're interesting to me. I love, um, I just love a lot of an a lot of romantic and slash animes. I love these Say I Love You anime. I love, I just love watching a relationship develop basically. I love when like it takes them so long to get together and it's agonizing for me to watch because I wish they get together sooner. But when they do actually get together and do cute things, like give each other hints, I just love watching that. And I don't know, I've just been fascinated with it for a very long time now. I'm obsessed with watching anime. I watch it like a lot. Um, I have a problem with it because I watch it too much, I think. But I do really love watching it. Another thing you get, you guys might not know about me is that I love watching Japanese and Korean dramas. I love watching those just as much as I love watching animes. I love them both. Um, I mostly like watching Japanese dramas because I have one specific drama that's Japanese and I just love watching them. Um, if you've guys seen it in my BFF tag with Tori, the second one I think it was, um, I asked her what's my favorite Japanese drama and the answer was Mischievous Kiss. I love that show. I love that drama so much. I'm obsessed with it. I love the characters. I love how Naoki is so like, I don't know. He's, well, he's very smart. Um, he seems like he doesn't care, but he really does. I love watching Hara, Hana Yori Dango. And I love watching Bromance, which is a Taiwanese um, drama. But I do love watching those three mainly. And I especially love Mischievous Kiss. Another thing you guys may not know about me is I love watching animated movies. I love watching just certain animations. I like watching Disney movies in theaters when they came out. I saw Tangled when it came out. I saw Brave when it came out in theaters, even though that's a Pixar film. Um, I love just watching a lot of animated films. I love Hotel Transylvania. I love Megamind movie. I just love watching a lot of animated ones. I've seen a lot of them in theaters and I plan to see more. Um, recently, they've announced that uh, there's they're coming out with more live action movies of Disney movies. So I heard there's gonna be a live action version of The Lion King, which I'm very excited for. And I really hope it's not a ripoff from the original because I'm a huge fan of that movie. I'm looking forward to that movie, just like the Aladdin movie that's coming out. Another thing you guys may or may not know about me is that I love the band Skillet. If you guys watched my concert experience video about them, I've been a fan of them for a very long time now. I have a lot of shirts. I have the lanyard when I went to their show. I've seen, I've seen them twice. I love their songs. Um... I'm definitely a fan of them. I've been a fan of them for a very long time. I've also been a fan of my favorite band from the 90s. I basically grew up with them since I was born. Um, I love Backstreet Boys. They're my favorite band of all time. I love all their songs. I've been a fan of them ever since I was little. I saw them for the first time two years ago um, in December. Uh, and I cried. I didn't get to see them that long, but I cried. I loved it so much seeing them. Um, I hope to see them when the residency is over in Las Vegas and I hope to see them for more than an hour instead of like 20 or so minutes. So they've been my favorite band ever since I was a kid and I'll always continue to love them until the day I die. Another thing you guys may not know about me is I love video games. I play video games for a very long time now. My favorite game of all time to play is Life is Strange. I love it so much. I love the character. I love the storylines. I um, I love Before the Storm, which they're coming out with a farewell episode, which I'm very excited for. I love Disney games. I love Assassin's Creed Unity. I've played that a few times. I've played What Remains of Edith Finch. I love that one. I've played Grand Theft Auto. I love The Walking Dead, the video game with Clementine and Lee. I 
love those games especially. Those are the ones I love playing. It depends on the video game, but I do love playing video games. Um, yeah, I'm not obsessed with it as I used to be, but I do love it a lot. The last thing you guys may or may not know about me is I love YouTubers. I watch YouTubers every single day. I have some shirts from them. I have a um, plushes, I have a calendar. I love Tyler Oakley, I love Joey Graceffa. I met Tyler once, I met Joey twice, and my all time favorite now, I love Tyler and Joey equally, I love them all, but I love Dan and Phil. They've been my favorites for a while now. I love their gaming channel. I love their individual channels. I have Dan and Phil plushes over there on my bed. I have a Dan and Phil calendar right there. I have shirts from them and they're gonna be in LA and San Diego on my birthday month in August, a day after my birthday and on my birthday on the 7th and the 8th. They're gonna be in the LA area in San Diego and I really wish I could see them, but I can't. That would be a great birthday present, but I won't be able to see them, sadly. And I would really love to see them on my birthday, which is the 7th of August. Um, I hope one day I'll get to meet them, but they are my all-time favorite YouTubers. I love watching them. Me and Tori love watching them together. Um, we laugh all the time with their videos. We love seeing their expressions. We love the way they act towards each other, the way they look at each other, like when Phil does something funny and Dan looks at him like, why'd you say that? But I just love them so much and I hope one day I'll get to meet them. All right, well that was my get to know me and my interest video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will soon come out with the vacation I went on to Universal Studios in Hollywood. Um, but for now I just wanted to get a video out of me sharing what I like with you guys and what my interests are. So yeah, all right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye Rosies.